what exactly is it that is bothering you about Nigeria? Can you tell us? Well, uh, there are many things that bother me about this country. A lot of things bother me about this country. Um, let me start first. The one that has been irritating me deeply, you know. First of all, I'm very passionate about Nigeria. I love this country more than I love myself. You get? I love this country very, very much. And looking at the things happening around us, it's, it's just annoying. Okay, look at what the one that was happening a few weeks ago. That was about the jam thing. 120, for God's sakes. What would the universities be, be churning out then? What kind, of, what kind of graduates will we be churning out? You get? At 200, we're complaining that it's too small. And you bring it down to 120. Who's, what, what purpose is this serving? Why, why are you putting it at 120? You get? Which means if I score 40 over 100 in each of the jump examinations, which is below average, I can still get to university. Then, then more people to gain admission. That was the idea. More people, should, then they should work harder. Do you understand? What is the purpose of school? You have to work hard to get your grades. Do you understand? You don't reduce just because you want to get more people. Where are the more people? From which area? From which part? Is anyone complaining that there are lesser students? Who, what, what is that not supposed to serve? Do you understand? You get, that's just one. You look at the second one. Look at the NGO bill that everyone is talking about. You get, that even brings me to something very, 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 very interesting. These people set up, bring pieces of legislation, legis legislature, and they don't let the Nigerian people know what they are signing into law a large percentage of the time. Look at the, like the bill, for example. What does it stipulate? First of all, the NGO bill, is, to me, is a very draconian, authoritarian, completely totalitarian, despotic piece of legislation. It is terrible. It is bad. You shouldn't see the light of day. And why? Now, this, this horrible piece of legislature says that um, um, NGOs will be subject to the government, to the government's uh, 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 approval. Now, if the government is to take control of NGOs, what is now non-governmental about NGOs? Is it not governmentalization of non-governmental organizations? Does it make any sense? You get? It says that the president, a 12-man committee, you get, which will be selected by the president, you understand, subject to approval by the Senate, will be in charge of, um, of um, recertifying NGOs after a period of two years. Do you understand? Which means the government can determine which NGOs they want to run and which ones they don't. And me and you both know that NGOs sponsor C uh, uh, um, groups that, that engage in civic participation, you get that talk about civic participation, which most of these groups put the government in check in terms of performance. And you want the government to control non-governmental organizations, you get? Do you know how dangerous that is? Now, now let me shock you with some, with some facts. Most political parties... Mm -hmm. funneling money you get through NGOs most people don't know that's why you notice most politicians in Nigeria their wives have foundations you get they have NGOs they use these things to bring in money they use these things to receive foreign donation you get now if you block that and you say the president should be in charge which means there will be no no voice of opposition again do you understand there will be no nobody to put the government in check impoverishment is a mechanism of political control you get? When you look at these kind of things, you know that it is dangerous. And again, why is it at this point in time? Do you understand? Why is it a year to the general elections? Do you get? Why, why at this point in time? This terrible legislation, leg, legislate, piece of legislator, leg, legislature was duplicated, in, I think it's serial alone or so. And it was, it, was, it was abolished. It was, they condemned it widely. And they copied that piece of legislature verbatim and brought it to Nigeria here. And it had passed the first and second reading before it became public that, look, see what is being planned. Is this how things are supposed to go in our country? And this is happening a year to the general elections. Two, military operations are being launched all over the south. A year to the general elections. And people are not afraid. Do you understand? Why are you launching? Okay, let's say you launch in the east because of the IPOB issue, which I believe should have been handled more diplomatically. You launch in the south south. Do you understand? You launch in the southwest, which is what, which 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 gave a wrong signal to me, because there is no visible sign of unrest in the southwest. So why are you taking soldiers to the southwest? For what reason? What purpose? Do you understand? Two, Fayoshe declared his presidential ambition. Do you understand? And the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, you get that same day, the EFCC arrested. Fayoshe's 
um, uh, accountant general, the two people in charge of finance of the state. The same day he declared his presidential ambition was the same day EFCC remembered that this man had, that these two people have case. Are you seeing something wrong there? Two, um, 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 what is his name? Uh, Kachuku released the letter. You get? And a few days later, shortly after, his house caught fire. You heard of that, Abi? You understand? And we are seeing all these things and we are not talking. Atiku has shown interest in running for 2019. And weeks after, his, contract, his company, Intel's, a long-standing contract they had with the Nigerian Post Authority was revoked. Under what circumstances? Why? What are these signs? And the person leading us is a former military dictator. My brother, from the antecedents of people, you judge their future actions. Do you understand? These are things that bother me. These things, these things irritate me. You get? Look at the IPOB issue. If I were the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, I wouldn't do what the president did. And here's what I would have done. If people are agitating for something, you find out what is the root cause of the agitation. Do you understand? As the leader, you follow diplomatic pattern. What do you do? You discredit Kanu's logic. Why is he holding the people? Because he was able to unite them under one grievance, that they are being marginalized. Why not show them otherwise? You, understand? you might be like, why should he do that? Why should he go through that stress? He's the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And in politics, any move you make that creates more enemies than friends for you is very dangerous. No matter how little you think they might look now, insignificant they might look, they will keep fighting you. And it's not a good move. You must always apply diplomacy in everything we do. Do you understand? These things, these things are very annoying. Look at what happened between Kachuku and Baru. Do you understand? Look at what happened between Kachiko and Baru. Baru is claiming that under the NMPC Act, he had the right to issue uh, or to, 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 to pass such contracts and, uh, and get clearance from the president. It's, it's not right. Under the same NMPC Act, according to what I learned, he says that a, the committee, a committee of ministers, must approve contracts before they are signed. Do you understand? They must look at the contract before it is approved. Do you get these are the things that are happening in my country at the moment that is irritating me. You get? Look at what happened with the NGO bill. Yoweri Museveni of Uganda is closing down, was a few weeks ago, was closing down NGOs. NGOs he felt were against his bid to increase age time limits so that he can be president for life. This is not fair. Do you understand? This is not fair. You get? And if you ask me, another problem of this country that bothers me is the structure. Nigeria doesn't have a fair structure. Me and you both know. This country needs to be restructured. And it needs to be restructured quickly. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, let me give you an example. Look at oil that is our major source of revenue. You get? Federal allocation is being made based on, according to what I learned, based on the um, number of local governments. Lagos, I still say this thing without missing words. I still believe Lagos is more populous than Kano. Kano and Jigawa have 77 local governments put together. Lagos has only 20. And Lagos contributes more to this nation than those two states. Do you understand what I'm saying? So there should be equity. The nation needs to be restructured and it must be restructured immediately. Do you understand? When you look at all these things, you look at it and you, as a Nigerian, if I wake up sometimes, I look around, they say people are jobless and things like that, I get angry. Change the structure of this nation. Take us back to the way we were when we were first uh, uh, independent, which is regional governments. Things will work that way. Why are we still practicing a constitution that was brought in by the military? Why are we still having a unity form of government? Who does this benefit? And, and why are they still hell-bent on maintaining the structure that they know will not move this country forward? It's painful. Do you understand? It's, you it's, 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 it's extremely painful. And we're talking about we're talking about helping the people. I still believe, if you ask me for the solution to Nigeria, after restructuring, I still believe the youths have a long role, a long, a big part to play. Like Baba Obasan just said, he said youths have to work hard and get what is theirs, which is work hard and, and, and make it to the leadership of this country. Do you understand? It's not by it's not it's not it's not by just wishing. Show go into show interest a lot of nigerian youths don't know anything about politics you talk about politics you talk about you talk about what's happening in the nation they call you an old man it's not supposed to be so that single story is bad Do you get i was i was i was a few months ago they did this thing called big brother bbn and a, um, 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 I, I i got to learn that over 12 million votes 
were casted for that thing. That show that shows nothing but moral decadence, in my own opinion. You get, there's no moral to learn from it. And people, youths, Nigerian youths are voting as high as 11, 12 million. Do you get? It's, it's a misplacement of priorities. You get? They, sh they, they need to be aligned. And lastly, if I, I have this strong belief that the Nigerian constitution must be made a compulsory read from secondary to uni in universities, it should be made a compulsory course. In secondary schools, curriculum should be created based on that as a full time subject. And here's why. When the people have information, when the people, if, 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 if the new youths that are coming through the system, even though they don't know all about it, because at least they will know a few things, they'll be able to make better informed decisions when it comes to civic participation, and they'll be able to hold those who are voted into government accountable. Do you understand what I mean? This is the way I believe we can move forward. Because if we continue this way, we we'll still keep getting the same, the same story. Look at Baba Cher Lawal. I, I was in support of the presidency in the last election. Do you understand? I said, finally, somebody is coming to fight corruption. But with what I have seen, it is government magic so far. Baba Cher Lawal to cut grass 200 million naira. Osibanjo has submitted the details of the investigation. And this man called Baba Chir, was found wanting. That report is gathering dust in one desk. Nothing has been done about Baba Chir. A few weeks ago, I read online that, um, um, or a few months ago, sorry, I read online that uh, Ojuz Okalu had a case with the EFCC. Immediately he joined the APC. Nothing has been heard about that case again. Do you understand? Several other cases of corruption that have come up and they've not been handled. Who and who is deceiving who? You say the president is surrounded by corrupt people. For God's sake, he is the president. It is part of his job to make sure that the people he surrounds himself with must follow his beliefs, must follow the policies he puts on ground. If somebody is found wanting, you investigate the person. If he's found guilty, you prosecute him. That is the way it is done in sane countries. Do you understand what I mean? So this is what I believe will help our country. And I'm very, I love this country. Because no matter what I do, till the day I die, I still have Nigerian blood flowing through my veins.